The USDA Food and Nutrition Service has defined what it considers to be a properly nutritious meal based on recommendations from the Institute of Medicine and the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. It is called a reimbursable meal. A reimbursable meal is a complete meal that everybody, all the students will purchase and if it's a reimbursable meal it meets the USDA requirements for reimbursement from the federal government. So, what are the components of a reimbursable meal? Vegetable. Fruit. Whole grains. Meat, meat alternate. Fluid milk. The idea of a reimbursable meal is important because they get a complete meal and something that's going to help them get through their day um, in a manner that is, overall, it's, it's productive for the student and for the mission, which is to feed them, nurture them, and educate them. Sometimes it's the only meal that the children may get. With the economic times in this day and age, some families just don't have the income to be able to feed their children the way that they would like to and the healthy way to feed their children. Such a meal includes more fruits and vegetables, including servings of leafy greens, red and orange vegetables, and legumes. In addition, this healthier, reimbursable meal includes more whole grains, fat-free or 1% milk, and proteins in the form of lean meats, beans, and legumes. Meal patterns are based off the dietary guidelines for Americans to promote healthy eating within our student body. There are specified meal patterns for all of the child nutrition programs to make sure that the foods provided to any participants meet uh, our goals of having balance and variety and help meet certain nutrition objectives. If we can teach children early on the, the benefits of eating healthy and showing them an example of what healthy meal patterns look like, then later on in life, that'll be the norm for them and not something that they have to learn. It'll auto automatically be ingrained from them because or ingrained in their brains. Whole grains really show some promising benefit at preventing some of the chronic diseases that um, are really expensive for our country to deal with and can limit your quality of life and how long you're able to stay an active part of the workforce and provide for your families. Uh, so we're really looking at trying to encourage people to adopt inclusion of the whole grains much earlier in their life. They find that if you can get children to adopt some of these healthier habits, it tracks with them through adolescence and adulthood at a much higher rate. And for every meal that meets those standards, the government will reimburse the school a set amount towards the cost of producing that meal. And besides that, the kids like it. When we switched over to um, a more healthier menu and guide towards um, help more healthy eating, I've seen the children from the beginning um, be more rebellious, but now, you know, they're coming around. They, if, if something's not offered, they're like, well, where, where the salad at? You know, why we don't have a salad day? Um, you don't have no bananas? What's going on? So they are gravitating to getting their fruits and their vegetables now. They're doing a great job. Within these components, the USDA recommends specific nutritional guidelines that may vary by age group. There's four different nutrition requirements that we have to meet. We have a range for calories, we have a range for sodium, and that's dependent on K through 5, 6 through 8, and 9 through 12. All of our meals do have to be under 10% saturated fat, and they cannot contain any trans fat. Lunchroom staff, from managers to kitchen to food line to cashier, all play a role in ensuring the success of reimbursable meals in your school. The food service workers play a tremendous role in helping kids select the right foods, select a reimbursable meal, and select a complete meal. We then allow our managers to pick out the 10 fruits and vegetables that they put on their salad bar every day, and then we specify a hot vegetable. From there, we take a look at all the vegetable components that we have to have, the different colors, and every day we put on a different color um, that's required, whether it's a dark green leafy vegetable, whether it's an orange vegetable, um, whether it's a starchy vegetable. In my kitchen, we make them look pretty so that the kids will want them and take them. It's good for them. You know, you want to introduce certain things into their diet so they'll get comfortable with eating them. The servers themselves will put out food in our schools. They'll try to put the foods out so the kids can see an array of different things that we offer. 
um, without having too much stacked up, they'll put out, you know, maybe one of our entree items with a vegetable and one of our entree items without the vegetable. That way the students can make their choice. And then they know that they can always go down the line and get a cold vegetable or a cold fruit or both. So when they get to that cashier, the cashier gets to look at that tray, make sure it's complete nutritionally. Um, they have all the components that we can be reimbursed then from United States Department of Agriculture. Because the reimbursement is what helps our department be able to furnish the meals to the children. Our students know that there's a, a way that they can get their meal for a cheaper price or a more expensive price. So we use those words reimbursable and a la carte with our students. We would word it more like if you want to get the meal for a cheaper price or you want to get it for a reimbursable price, then you would need to get um, a fruit with your meal or a vegetable with your meal. And if you get the meal, you get more bang for your buck, whereas if you get an a la carte, you're going to spend all your money and you don't get the bang for your buck. It really helps them to understand that it is more valuable to them to get the whole meal. Children understand that, but they understand economics even better that, you know, whatever I can get for the most for my money, that's what I want to do. Before you can nudge kids in the right direction to be sure they have selected a reimbursable meal, you need to understand the meal pattern criteria. My plate is an educational tool that we use in Anne Arundel County and across the country. It really shows uh, our students and adults alike um, a picture of the plate and how do you section your plate to get the best nutritional value to keep you fueled and ready to go. My plate helps visualize the components of a healthy diet for all Americans. It is based on nutritional dietary guidelines. Maryland's school meal requirements follow the My Plate guidelines. The My Plate components include five food groups. One, fruits. They include fresh, frozen, canned, dried versions, or 100% juice. Two, vegetables are sorted into subgroups according to their nutrient content. Three, all grains must be whole grain rich. Four, in the school breakfast and national school lunch programs, fluid milk is the only item in what my plate labels the dairy group. Five, the USDA considers high protein dairy foods, such as yogurt and cheese, to fall into the protein group, which is referred to as meat, meat alternates. This final group also includes chicken, beef, pork, fish, eggs, nuts, dried beans and peas, and tofu. Now, let's get to know more about school meals. Menus for the school breakfast program for grades K through 12 incorporate at least three of the five food groups or components. At a minimum, this includes milk, fruit or vegetables, and a grain or meat, meat alternates such as eggs, yogurt, or cheese sticks as a substitute for the breakfast grain. For schools using the offer versus serve meal service model, students are allowed to select which items they would like. They must include a half cup of fruit or vegetable plus two other menu items. So there's multiple combinations that you can make. Choose three, one of which is a half cup fruit or vegetable. And with all three of those, you're going to be able to get a reimbursable meal. The student's going to have a well-balanced meal. And it'll be a great way to start their day. And what about lunch? Menus for school lunch for grades K through 12 must incorporate all five of the food groups or components. Many schools use the offer versus serve meal service model, which means students can choose which menu items they would like, as long as at least three components are selected one of which must be a full serving of fruit or vegetable. For a reimbursable meal, you're going to have a protein, you're going to have a grain, you're going to have a choice of fruit or vegetable and dairy. If we offer all five and they take three, you're going to have a great meal. They have to have three of those five food groups. So one has to be a fruit or vegetable. It doesn't have to be the same fruit or vegetable. So it could be um, a quarter cup of something, a quarter cup of something else. Following the MyPlate model, school meals will offer the nutrition that can help prepare students for learning and for life. And because they result in reimbursable meals, 
your school benefits financially. Thank you for all of the hard work and customer service you dedicate to ensuring that students in your school have nutritious, appealing meals.